This is Cost Talk with Evan Kostman, and you are listening to episode 12. This week we do not have a guest, but instead we are doing a reader mailbag. I figured it would be fun to do one and uh, try it out, see what the responses I got, and if people like it, we'll keep doing it. Before we dive into the mailbag, I actually have one question for myself, because I've spent the past week reevaluating the podcast as the past week was my last week at my current job. There's nothing wrong with that. It was a contract. It was fulfilled. It was a summer job. And that was basically it. So I spent the past week thinking about the podcast and I asked myself, am I committed to this podcast? Over the summer, I was doing the job. I was doing the podcast. And Ron Swanson said it best. Don't half-ass two things. Whole ass one thing. So I'm sitting here today telling you that I'm going to commit to this podcast. And I'm going to commit to it fully. The past week, I've been sending out numerous emails trying to get really good guests to come on the podcast. And I've actually been surprised that I've been able to land a couple really big interviews. Uh, I've only told my friends the ones, but let's just say they're big. And I'm really excited to have them on. So we'll get into those episodes in the future and everything. But I just want you to know I'm doubling down on the podcast. We're going to put out a lot of content out there. Um, follow us on Twitter at Cost Talk. Like the Facebook page. We're going to be putting on a couple polls, a couple graphics, a couple videos, a couple everything. We're going to be going all in. So seriously, this is the time to invest in the Cost Talk podcast. If we had a stock, this would be a little bit of insider trading, but invest now because the returns are going to be exponential. Also, while we're talking about investing, if you could give us a rating on iTunes and subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, uh, Stitcher, YouTube, wherever you get the podcast, uh, give us a like. It would really mean a lot because the more people that do that, the higher the following episodes become on the charts. That means more people see it. That means more people rate it. And we'll have a snowball effect of everyone doing that. So please take the time it takes one to two minutes of your day. It really helps out the podcast if you do that. So please do that. Um, I don't ask for much and I do this for free. So, you know, no, I'm kidding. All right. So we have uh, a couple of questions because I want to keep it short episode. If we like this, maybe we'll go longer in future episodes. But seriously, uh, let us know how you do. Give us feedback. Uh, This goes back to uh, the ratings. If you give us feedback, we'll know what you like and what you don't. And make this podcast better. So please remember to review us. So the first question comes to us from Rocky of the What's the Fuss podcast. His question is, what's your dream interview? I've kind of joked about this, my friends, but my dream interview, or really the entire reason I created this podcast so that in a year it's successful enough that, uh, Donald Glover's press guy says, hey, do this interview with uh, this kid ahead of the Han Solo spinoff film from Star Wars. Not that I'm a huge Star Wars nerd or anything like that. I'm such a fan of Donald Glover and every single thing that he does ever since his days at Derek Comedy and seeing his ascent to what he is now. He's been a part of a couple of my favorite shows. He's produced albums. His song Freaks and Geeks is one of my favorites all time. I Yeah, so I'd genuinely love to have him on the podcast. It it would be a treat. It would be an honor. So I don't want to gush too much over him, but he would be my dream interview. Uh, Some combination of Mike Babcock, Michael Jordan, Mel Brooks, Dan Harmon. Those would be other guys that would be definitely up there, but Donald Glover's number one. The second question comes to us from Phil of the Semi-Intellectual Musings podcast. His question is, in what ways can younger generations market their skills and attain stable good employment while keeping our life goals in mind? It's actually a fantastic question, and I think it points to what I'm going through now, where, as I've mentioned on the podcast before, I, I'm a computer science graduate, and while I could definitely get an IT job and it would be stable, it would pay well, possibly very well, depending how long I did it and how long, how hard, how high I rose in the ranks. I just don't th- think coding all day, every day, and staring at a computer every day is the most agreeable career for everyone. 
I just want to explore the other options that maybe aren't as profitable, but would be more fulfilling for my life. Basically, I would say just find something you're passionate about, because if you're passionate about it, the money will come. So what I'm doing with this podcast, I, I want to, I want this podcast to be successful. And if I keep doing it, I keep doing the right things. We'll see where it goes. All right. Next question comes to us from Michael of the Not Your Father's podcast. This guy was killing it. I loved all of his questions. Um, I'm going to mention a second one later, but he was on a roll t- with these questions. So this one, is the NBA more marketable than the NFL? Now, if I was American, I feel like I would have a different perspective, but I have to say yes. I feel like the fact that the NBA is just so so easy to reproduce because all you need is a basketball and a hoop. I just feel like it's so easy to replicate compared to football where you need to organize a team. Uh, even then, you're maybe not even playing tackle football. So that's just my opinion. I, I think the NBA is a more marketable product. I think in the near future, the NBA will actually eclipse the NFL in terms of popularity. Um, I know the NFL has shorter seasons and that really helps with their popularity because it's a limit, it's a much more limited product. So it's easier to tune into every game. Yeah. But I just see the tides turning. I think the NFL is, is promoting the wrong people while like Roger Goodell is the face of the NFL and all seriousness. And he is for the wrong reasons. Adam Silver is a face, but he isn't the main face. The main faces you think of are, are LeBron James and Steph Curry and James Harden and all those guys. So. I think the NBA is a more marketable product. The next question comes to us from Vanessa, who didn't leave her podcast, but that's okay. Is automation really a threat to the service industry? Well, not an expert in the uh, automation service. I would say it's definitely a threat. Everything I've seen has said it's a threat, and maybe that's propaganda or however you want to put it. But this actually feeds into the last question about making yourself more marketable. Find more skills that aren't easily replaced by computers and you'll be fine. Don't worry. The next question comes to us from oh, our good buddy Cole Kransky. His question to me is, would you rather find would you rather fight a hundred toddlers or one a hundred foot toddler? Well, I'd rather not fight either because the bloodshed of toddlers is very depressing and uh, a, a horrible question, Cole. Why would you do this to me? But uh, I guess I'd rather fight the one 100-foot toddler. I feel like you sing it a lullaby, it falls asleep. Um, it's so big that maybe you can't, and, and it hasn't learned how to run, so maybe you can outrun it, and then you maybe never have to fight it. In the worst case, you know, living with yourself, I think one is much less than 100, so that's my answer. I'd rather fight the one 100-foot toddler. Definitely has the height advantage, and there's one thing I've learned f- you want to have the height advantage. Thank you, Star Wars. Or rather, the high ground. Sorry, Star Wars prequel fans. All right. And this last question I wanted to point out, but I didn't want to actually answer. It comes again from Michael. As I said, he killed it with the question. So how is the slow death of traditional television changing advertising? I think cord cutting has caused a lot of adver- advertisers and salespeople to find new means. Wow, I said I wasn't going to answer this, and now I'm answering it. I've noticed a lot of my writers uh, losing jobs or being forced to uh, change the video because advertisers know how to slap an ad at the start of the video, and it's like, oh, that's just like TV, except it's on the internet. I know cord cutting is a real issue for everybody in the advertising market, and I'm sorry to those people, but video may not be the way to go. I think there's many ways, like this podcast, where if, hey, if you want to slap an advertisement in here, I'm shameless, I'll do it. But I I actually wanted to point out this question because this upcoming week I have uh, an interview with a really big writer at uh, over at Yahoo. And I'm really excited to have him on because this is a question I want to talk to him about, the changing media landscape that it's kind of scary to think about the changes, but it's also great to see things like The Athletic where they're putting a paywall. So instead of doing advertisements, it's just content and it's fantastic. The writing is superb over there go check it out everyone should vote for it it's great if you like hockey you like uh, you like basketball you like baseball they have ken rosenthal now which is just huge I, I subscribed when it was just like an outlet in toronto now it's 
everywhere. It's crazy. So yeah, go check that out. Um, remember to rate and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Um, yeah, and other than that, I'll be back next week. Um, we might even start doing two week. Who knows? We'll start ramping up production. And uh, talk to you next week. Bye, everybody.